Welcome to the Austin All Day Podcast. I'm Jason Powers, and this is episode 28. We are here with Chef Camden of Phoebe's Diner and Liberation Kitchen. You guys sit back, grab a drink, and check it out. So, cheers. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. Chef Camden, Mm -hmm. Phoebe's Diner, owner, chef, and Liberation. Mm -hmm. Liberation's new? So, Liberation, no, actually, uh, it was a wild story. So, uh, Liberation Kitchen, um, and originally it was Liberation Fish. Oh, okay. And the goal was like we Funny. just we just got done talking about yeah. Gulf seafood and stuff like that. So that was that was my pat like part of the passion behind it. And so we opened so August. But anyways, we opened last year. Yeah, last year of August. So um, we had the grand opening party, and it was at Adelbert's Brewery. Okay. And I'm good friends with them. And we had a really good, a great, great showing. A lot of people showed up. It was a really good time. And um, it was all Gulf seafood. It was all, you know, oyster po' boys. We did, you know, Gulf redfish, fish and chips. We did, uh, you know, uh, green tomatoes with like Old Bay. And I mean, you know, yeah. that sort of stuff. And um, so we went and had the big grand opening. And then my wife showed up, and she was super pregnant, and uh, was basically due two days before that. And and then we had the opening. She drove home, and her best friend was there, one of her best friends, and um, she she was com- complaining about something because she, I mean she was due two days before, and. She said, can you just, we just go to the doctor and talk to them or whatever. And she's like, yeah, yeah. So she went to the hospital and we're like, we're going to admit you. And so she called me and she's like, hey. She's worried, right? Yeah, she was worried for her. And she's like, oh, it's weird. And basically she called me. So we opened the trailer. Yeah. And then we had my daughter the next day. Okay. That's, yeah. Yeah. Talk about a handful. Yeah. And then um, at that same time. Like I was, I, I did a lot of the carpentry work for the restaurant for Phoebe's Diner. Okay. And um, so I stepped away briefly to open the trailer with another. Phoebe's was already open. Phoebe's wasn't open yet. Oh, okay. Phoebe's wasn't open yet, and uh, and we so that's, we skipped it right into Liberation. But people love Phoebe's, man. I just I I appreciate it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. You know, Liberation's moved around and we've changed dynamics a little bit here and there, but Yeah, but continue. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a trailer. I mean, it gives you the ability to change your model. Liberation Kitchen is the trailer, mm-hmm. right? Liberation Kitchen. Yeah, it gives you the ability to change that stuff. So, in the meantime, like I stepped away briefly uh, cuz I had partners with the restaurant. Yeah. And then I had a different partner with the trailer. Okay. And so I stepped away briefly and opened the trailer and got all that stuff going with all of our our goals and agenda for that. And then we literally opened the restaurant. So we opened the trailer. The next day had Phoebe. And then literally like it was maybe four weeks, maybe, probably closer to three weeks, we opened the restaurant. You know, it's funny. Your daughter's name is Phoebe. Mm-hmm. So I was going to say Liberation Kitchen because it launched the next day would be like hers. All right. <laughs> but it's it's flip-flopped. <laughs> well, we I was I was far in the works with uh, the restaurant before we even decided. Oh, to, yeah, the to, name to, was Arles. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, and the name that I came up with for the, the, the restaurant initially um, when I pitched the project to my partners was something completely different. And Do you care to share? What was it? Um, you know, for those that know what Phoebe's Diner is, it's, uh, you know, Texas Smokehouse meets like Greasy Spoon Diner, right? So we smoke, I mean, we smoke all our briskets, we smoke tomatoes, beets, we smoke our own ham, 
Um, you know, we smoke chicken. We smoke a lot of stuff. Nice. And we do it all in house. So, uh, you know, and, and the idea, and apparently I'd been talking about something like this for years, according to my father. And I just, I don't remember because I probably have been so busy doing everything else, running restaurants, you know, being a chef. Right, yeah. I want to get into that, too. Yeah. So uh, he's been like, one of my first jobs was in a breakfast place. Okay. So and he's Brunch, just... Brunch, breakfast, yeah. Like just a... Yeah, no, we closed at 3 o'clock. the same thing. You know, okay. we're open 7 to 3, 7 days a week and at Phoebe's, and that's what I used to do. Yeah. So I'd go to work at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, and that's what I... That's kind of how I... I started in a bakery. Okay. But... Uh, Here in Austin? No, in uh, South Lake, in Dallas. Okay, all right. So you like the... You're attracted to the early hours? I prefer it over the evening stuff oh, sure, or whatever. Sure. It's definitely better for a family man, too, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's much better. But um, the original con- the original idea when I pitched it, and it was just like kind of a friend of a friend thing mm-hmm. um, with Phoebe's. Um, yeah, I just started kind of... I felt like I was kind of almost consulting. It was just like they were asking me questions, right? Oh, okay. And I... It wasn't in the site that you were going to be partners? No. Okay. It, I had a job. I was being a chef. Sure. You know, and I was just like, why are you asking all of these questions? Okay. And then it kind of moved forward. And, um, you know, I met with the guys that I'm partners with now, and they're great. You know, they're awesome guys. Uh, you know, they're family. But when I originally pitched the concept... My idea was, you know, it was a breakfast, diner, uh, kind of Texas cafe. Like, we do coffee, rum, brisket, and coffee, barbecue because we're a breakfast joint. So right. it's like, how can we bring that together? And um, my, my, na- my name I came up with was Smoke and Pancakes. Smoking pancakes. Smoking pancakes. I like that too. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of fun. Well, they hated it. My wife hated it, and everybody hated it. So I was just like, "All right, well, I'm just." I never. I didn't know. I didn't. Well, I knew you at the time, but I didn't say, yeah. hey, "Hey, Jason, what do you think about this name? <laughs> what do you think about this name?" Right. Well, you know what? When it's you're talking about a breakfast place, I'm like, "Yeah, name it whatever you want." <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it gets the point across. It's it, it, smoke. And it's pancakes. No, it's. I think it's a pretty legit name, but the same the same concept, just different name. Right. So it became this different. Uh, it became a more family dynamic. Yeah, is yeah. really what it became. And you know, I talked to definitely. My, yeah. I talked to my wife, and it was just like, I mean, she was pregnant. Yeah. She was. I mean, gosh. Can't say no. Six six months pregnant yeah. at that point in time. So it's like, man, you know, we had already picked out the name and. Um. I had. I mean, I obviously have to ask her permission. It's like, what if I called the restaurant? What if I named it after our daughter? Sort of thing. Was she on board immediately? And she loved it. Good. She yeah. loved it. I and can't imagine her not being it. On yeah, board. yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. It's it's been it's it's been awesome, man. It's been a really good run. Yeah, man. And um, so it's been open officially for how long? Phoebe's. So Phoebe's will be open two years in September. Okay. And then Liberation was it's right around the same same August. August. Um, and I, these are your two current projects, but right. you've been, I mean, you've been, you know, a, a chef for years, right? I mean, yeah, a long time. So my entire life, mostly. So where briefly? Um, well, where are you from originally? So I was uh, born in Arlington, Texas, and then raised in Bedford, yeah, Texas. So H E B. So okay. not the grocery store, but the original, like Hearst Euless Bedford, that area. So oh, okay. it's a suburb of, it's it's almost directly in between Dallas and Fort Worth. Okay. And when along, when did Austin come into sight? So I moved to Austin in 2002. 2000. Okay, so you were already cooking prior to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to, you know, in high school I was cooking i was at a uh, bakery when i was 15 okay and that was up in the same area and then i went to uh texas tech for a year sure. and went to their restaurant hotel and institutional management program did you get a lot out of it 
I didn't make it, you know. I I made it through a year and went through all the just normal rigmarole of your first year of college of computer science and literature and and all the the bases and stuff like that. So I I finished a lot of that, and then, you know, I had some good professors in the college and the restaurant management program up there is uh, one of the top in the country. And then I just kind of backed out and, you know, listening to the future of what it is that they, I mean, they're, they're grooming you to be restaurant managers okay, and hotel operators and stuff like that. So <clears throat> I kind of, but you, did you know you were going to be a chef? I swayed away. I liked cooking, man. Yeah. I swayed away and I just decided that it, it wasn't for me. Okay. And, you know, I spent a lot of time driving home and every weekend and just, it wasn't Wondering. Yeah. yeah, just it wasn't it wasn't you know, maybe if I'd stayed there a little longer, maybe I could have got something different out of it. Yeah, yeah. But I just But all said and done, I'm pretty happy with the path you've chose as a chef. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's it's different. D- definitely different. It's different, but you know, it's it it lends its way to be I mean, it allows you to be a lot more creative. Sure, than, sure. You know, as an, an operator, I mean, I am an operator. I own I own a restaurant. I own a trailer. I have owned restaurants and been partners and all that sort of stuff. So it's, uh, it's a that I mean that's the challenge in itself. But I mean, being a chef partner, it still allows you to get to play it a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So and you've uh, kind of earned your stripes. You didn't know culinary school. You never signed up for anything like that. You kind of signed, wrote school off, or did you go to culinary? I did. I did go to culinary school. I went down here. So to Le Cordon Bleu. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I, I basically, I mean, it was. I was required to get an education and a degree, per my father. Oh, okay. So, uh, I. Decided it was between honestly it was between here and CIA, and uh, CIA is well I mean that's I out mean, of Texas and it's rep I mean oh, holy crap it's yeah. culinary Institute of America it's reputable it's so what uh, what made you choose Le Cordon Bleu? It was still in Texas yes and that's key, I right? it, yeah and my family was so my family's here all of my family's here yeah, yeah and so that was the biggest thing and um, I had friends that were going to UT. Yeah, yeah. So that was that, that. Those were the biggest. Those were the key things. Sure, sure. Really, because the other. Do you regret uh, that decision ever? No. N- I mean, no. Okay. Not really. I, I'm interested because I my it's 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 interesting because my dad's business partner, his youngest son, who is, oh man, he's like a couple years older than me. Mm-hmm. He went to CIA. Oh, yeah? And it wasn't anything that we talked about. It wasn't anything that was... It was just this fluke thing. Oh. And he went to CIA. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's a chef in Dallas right now. And, I mean, he's worked for some amazing, amazing people. Um, and he's got his own thing going. But it was just this kind of weird... Oh, he went to, he went to culinary school, too. Yeah, it's yeah. It's like, <laughs> what? What? It was, it was, it was, it was interesting. So um, but, you said that you did that because your dad kind of he requested that you get a degree. Are you, is, so? Are you like a family? Are you still real close with the folks? I'm super close with the folks. Yeah, um, especially with the daughter in the life now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have uh, you know my mom and my dad and stuff. They're still around and yeah, yeah. Um, there's some some backstory to that, and I mean I don't know that we need to really get into that, but. Um, yeah, you know, he, he required that I go get an education, sure. and um, a culinary education wasn't one of them. <laughs> right. So Took some convincing? I mean, I paid for it. Yeah. So That'll work, right? It, it was, I remember going to, so we went to Cheddar's, and it was myself and my dad, because my mom was totally cool. She was just like, let's just do it. Yeah, yeah. And it took some, uh, my dad and I and just had, we went to Cheddar's sure. <laughs> in Bedford okay. and sat down and had a meal and we talked about it and he's like, you want to be a cook? A cook, right. A cook. Right. You're not a chef. You're not a restaurant tour. You're not anything. You're a cook. So, but yeah, no, it took some, it took some serious convincing. 
And I'm assuming now, fast forward to your current position, sure. that he's, I mean, he's satisfied with your, your path. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty content, you know. I good, mean, good. I'm, I'm able to take care of my, my family. And Are they in Austin? They're in Dallas. Okay. They're right. in, not they're too far. In, they're not too far. They're a couple hours away, but. Good, good. Yeah. Good. Well, that's good, man. Family's key. Family, yeah, they're great, man. They're, 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 they're learning for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've been through all the, the, the gauntlets of the culinary and the uh, hospitality industry that I've been through and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, they listen to our, they kind of just, they're like, what's your new saga? <laughs> what's your, what's your new story? I mean, that's how they kind of, I don't know, I want to say they live vicariously, but you know, they're. What do you What do you think if I if I did this? And I'm just like, Nah, dude, you don't you, yeah. don't, you don't want to do that. That's well, crazy. they're looking to you for advice, though. Oh, I mean, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes. So, Le Cordon Bleu. What year was that? Uh, three. Okay, so that was pretty much when you came here. Pretty much, yeah. No, I came here to do that. Okay, to do that. So, what uh, What's your kind of path? Like your uh, your culinary career. I mean, what would you start at? Where'd you Where'd you go from Le Cordon Bleu? Where'd I go and what I do? Because um, I know you've you worked your way up, and I mean you're owning you your part your partners in two restaurants right now. Sure, a restaurant sure. Tra- trailer as well too. Yeah, well, yeah, but, um, yeah, but I knew yet um, uh, mighty no wait mighty bird mighty bird mighty bird. Okay, so we'll get to that. We'll sure. go through that. So um, I I worked at the Oasis. I'm okay. like Travis. Yeah, yeah. When I was 18. Who was the chef at the time? There? 17, 18. Um, so the chef that was there when I first started, his name was Adrian Creasy. And he was, uh, I mean, I oh mean, I don't want to. I can't. He was a product of some bigger company. I want to say like Johnny Carino's or something like that. I can't, I can't remember. But he came and went. He came and went for okay. sure. Okay. Right. Yeah. And I was I was a line cook. Okay. I mean, so I, that's where it began uh, on the line. Well, I mean, when I was here for sure. I yeah. mean, other than that, I was in South Lake. Uh, I worked at the Corner Bakery. Okay. Right. Right. And uh, when I turned, I think sixteen, they they wanted to send me to like Brinker Management school because Brinker's Dallas. Brinker owns Dallas, basically. Um, and then uh, after that, I worked at a small cafe called... Uh, well, I went to uh, Texas Tech, and I was working at the Corner Bakery, and I came back off and on, and then when I moved back, I I, I mean, I mean, I had a 3.4 GPA at Texas Tech, and I left. Yeah. I didn't fail out like some of my... Compatriots, if you whatever, right? <laughs> um, I left because I didn't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. And um, life, I, go- life goals, right? Well, I mean, yeah. You, you wanted yeah. to do something. You wanted to be happy. Yeah, I had. Yeah, I had, I had some stuff I wanted to. Yeah. I mean, really, at that point, I figured out that I didn't want to be a manager. I wanted to be a chef. Like I loved cooking, and I mean, that was back when in the early two thousands. That's when Emeril Lagasse was big on the Food Network, and the Food Network was, you know, that big. Right, right. And now, and now it's in massive. Comparison, yeah. Oh, dude, it was it, it was tiny, and, and you never even would have thunk it at the time. Not really. I mean, I remember. I mean, sleeping in my futon at my parents' house. Yeah. Watching Emma Lagasse going to sleep <laughs> yeah. every single night, you know, and I, those were my f- first real cookbooks, to be honest with you, yeah. one of those Emma Lagasse and stuff like that. So, um, uh, you know, switching over from Texas Tech and understanding, and my grandmother, my grandmother was an amazing cook. I mean, this little 410 woman. Yeah, walking so, around and is that you drew some, some inspiration from her? Yeah, well, all both of my parents were good cooks. Yeah, yeah. and they oh, did, both of them. That's cool. Yeah, they did like to cook. You know, they were together. The they never really cooked together. Okay, but each separately. Oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah. nice, man. <laughs> yeah, so my mom, you know, she'd make dinner a lot of times, and on the weekends it was all dad. Okay, for the most part, and um, my grandmother, I mean. You know, we're my last name is Sturzenberger. We're German. 
Yeah, yeah. And she'd make those German noodles, and she'd cut them by hand, and she'd do all like all the pies and all whatever. And they had a garden in their backyard, and it was just, yeah. You know, and she's four ten, and you know they had high counters, so she just had stools everywhere. So when I was young, I would get up, and there's pictures of me doing whatever, helping my grandmother because I had two older sisters and then two older cousins that were both girls also. So I was the only boy and they just kind of like beat me up and <laughs> put makeup and whatever on me. So, um, and now you're in a house full of girls. I'm in a house full of girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanted a girl. I, I, what's wrong with me? Right. Oh, oh, well, Hey, I, I wanted a boy. I got a girl. Yeah. Very, very happy with the girl. Yeah. Well, they're awesome, man. They're it's, awesome. it's great. Yeah. I wanted a girl. My dad wanted a boy to, Take on that lineage, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. So I mean, maybe we we, we have time. Maybe I, I never ever would have expected how ama- amazing having a daughter is. Yeah, the daddy's girl saying. Well, oh. do you have sisters? No, it's just my my brother. So yeah. I my my mother grew up in a house with just boys. Okay, and now I you know I just have my daughter. Well, that's completely different, I guess. You know? Yeah, I don't even know. Like, I was clueless. I don't. I I would be clueless with a boy, to yeah. be honest with you. Wait, I mean, you are a boy. You were a boy. <laughs> I am. A, yeah, I'm a, I'm a boy. Yeah, I, mean, just I am a boy. But, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's uh, You're I, a big I boy now. But it, once upon a time, yeah. But when I see boys now, I'm like, thank God that didn't happen to me. <laughs> well, just just wait right, until right. that. I mean, <laughs> you, your daughter's five. You have what? Wait ten years. Right. Right. Oh, and, then, yeah. and then you're going to be like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, I, and, yeah. <laughs> but. Story for another day. <laughs> yeah, for another day. But anyways, we derailed a little bit. Um, no, you were, you were you know, mom and dad, dad cooks on the weekends, and grandma, you're sitting on the counter cooking, and you're. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I asked for, I got an easy bake oven when I was six. Okay. You know, that was my Christmas present. That was sure. my big thing. So I was. Cooking things with a light bulb for my sisters, yeah, yeah. you know, cookies and whatever that little just add water mix was, and that's what I was doing when I was six. So, I mean, it's um, I've always loved it. I remember making this like terrible, terrible peanut butter bread when I was like, it was it was high school, and yeah. and my girlfriend was around, and I just wanted to make this bread because I remember making bread and the bread maker and with my grandmother yeah. and we're going to do this and we're going to do this and we're going to do this. So I made this peanut butter bread and it was just this brick <laughs> of terrible, terrible bread. But that was, I went to culinary school to be a baker. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is there, are this, is there separate classes for pastry and culinary or is it just one whole? When I went there, for, for Texas Culinary Academy, there was just one class. Right. At that time, because they just opened. And how about Le Cordon Bleu? Sorry. Well, it's the same. Okay. It's the same. So we so when I went, it was Texas Culinary Academy. Oh, okay. And they were teaching the Le Cordon Bleu program. I got you. Okay. Through that, and then they got sanctioned, and after years and years, it just took them a little while to get sanctioned by them, but they didn't have a separate program. Well, net. I don't even know if they're open anymore, to be honest with you. I don't think they're open. No, they closed. Okay, yeah. they closed. Every, um, everywhere, though, every, across the country. The Le Cordon Bleu? The yes. whole system? It's done. Well, that's really sad. Yeah, it's a bummer, but we've had so many people on the podcast who have attended that actual school here in Austin. I actually, myself, attended Le Cordon Bleu in Chicago. Okay. You know, so, I mean, it's a, it's a popular place to attend yeah. school, but, yeah, it's gone. Well, they had a lot of financial problems. Yeah, that's gone now. Yeah, well, they can do what they want to do. But, I mean, when they pulled the the actual, like, uh, degree, yeah, I think that was an epic fail. Epic fail. So, I mean, if you, you have somebody like my dad telling me to get a degree, right. though he didn't necessarily agree with the degree that I was getting... Yeah, I was still getting an associate's degree, right? In applied science, and so they pulled it. And what did it? Become? They pulled it, and you just got a certificate. Oh, you just got the the chef certificate. Well, when I went there, if you didn't make over a certain score, you didn't get certified. Yeah, yeah. As a chef, and honestly, like one of my buddies 
he didn't get it. Well, he's a badass chef now. Yeah. And has a badass sure. yeah. and has a badass yes. restaurant, but he didn't get the degree because he didn't know all the answers to the questions or whatever. I yeah. mean, it didn't matter. Well, Maybe. it's it's silly when it comes when, like the test because yeah. some people can't take tests, especially it, it, with a chef. It, it right? is it is silly. It's there silly. are people who never attend culinary school and they're you know on top of the game. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, it was it was really different. Um. The, I mean, the decade that I went through. And a lot of people went through, for that matter, but getting through and not having a culinary degree. Right. It was kind of a, it was in the early 2000s, it was kind of a deal. It was, you know, if I, I mean, I was uh, a, the, the restaurant chef at the Hyatt. Yes, and, we had Dan Valuz. Okay. Do you know Dan? Chef Dan, uh, he's at Dean's One Trick Pony now. He was at Hyatt Regency. I, know, so he, I was at Lost Pines. And he was at Lost Pines briefly. He mentioned he knew you. Okay. He was just in here a couple of days ago. Okay, so I probably know Dan. Okay. <laughs> now he, I think Dan cooked for me, if it's the same Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he he's was, from, um, oh, goodness, oh, uh, New Jersey. Okay. He transferred from New Jersey to go to Lost Pines. Okay. And he started staging originally. Okay. So I don't know. He knows you. You know him. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a guarantee. So I think he was one of my cooks, if we're talking about the same guy. Sure, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, interviewing with, I remember, I mean, I'm not going to drop whatever, but I remember interviewing with a one of the nicer, so in the early 2000s, it, Austin was not a culinary yeah, right. epicenter at Which all. Is an interesting yeah. you know, transition for yourself as a yeah. chef to watch. So, so moving into the city and finding a job and like getting something going, you know, the place that everybody said because I didn't know any any better. You know, when I first moved here, I cooked at Hooters. I was a line cook at Hooters. And thought nothing of it, right? I mean like that I was, just needed a job. Right, I was right. like, I'm in a city, I don't know anybody. Right. Um, I'm young. I want to meet some people. But to I'm paint s- the picture, I'm single. Hooters was a, a functional restaurant, and like there was not like Contigo and Phoebe's and oh, there's all of n- there was nothing. Nothing. There was nothing. So it's just that you're getting a job. You went to culinary school. You're getting sure. a job, and sure. And so the big thing everybody talked about was the Oasis. Oh, okay. Because it was the it was a big. Oh my God! It's was it new? Is oh, it, no, no. I mean, the Oasis opened in 1983. Okay, but it, with the restaurant, the whole works. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. So, I mean, it was just kind of a transition from being a fry cook or a line cook there. And, and I mean, you washed dishes, you did everything there. I mean, it was it was fine, but it, it, you, you didn't care because you're 18 years old and there's yeah, right, right, right. all these hot girls walking around. So it didn't really matter, right? It's actually, yeah, the job pays for itself. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a perfect setting for an 18-year-old. Yeah. Um, so uh, then I got, I got interviewed and it was off. It was the off season. And uh, I got the job at the Oasis and it was just like, oh, cool, this is a... I mean, I didn't know any better. I just moved here. Right. So I didn't hear any stories about well the 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 food is okay but the drinks are better but the view is amazing sort of thing or whatever yeah. but and at that point in time there was you know Jean Luc Saul was one of the instructors when I went to culinary school well there was back when Jean Luc's Bistro was the place and well Sean Circule cooked at Jean Luc's back in the day and then there were there were no places man. Right. There, there were no places. You worked everywhere. Any, any, anybody that wanted to be, I mean, David Bull at the Driscoll. Yep. Any, anybody that wanted to cook and learn food went to work for David. Okay. And that was the big thing. And that was that or like Disney cruises came in and they just fed off of culinary school. People, they, they, they come in and they, they send you to Disney. They send you on the cruise ships. Yeah. And they pay you nothing. And they just take Disney, the, for people who don't know, like they, they shy away from like people with tattoos and piercings. Yeah. It gets a little. Uh, but they also take advantage of situations. You know, they want the best. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, who, did, who doesn't want to make the most money that they could possibly make, right? Sure, so, sure. I mean, which is fine. 
But, um, but yeah. So, uh, did you end up at the Driscoll? No, not no. at all. Okay. I, I mean, I was uh, I was a sous chef at the the Oasis when I was like nineteen. Okay. So I was working seventy something hours a week when I was nineteen. Just going at it. Yeah, and and you know that place was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. It was not a culinary any sort of anything. Oh, crazy! Know. In what respect? The volume. I mean, we sat, you know. 2,600 people or something like that at one time, and then we had the, the, the banquets and oh, on, yeah. on top of I mean, it was over 3,000 people. At that, that point in time, we were pouring more tequila than anybody else, like, in the entire country. We were the fourth largest really? seated... Yeah, we were, pour, like, we were the fourth largest restaurant seated in the country. I, I mean, it was that's, just that's cool. Yeah, they should give you a trophy for the tequila. Yeah, dude, it was, it's crazy. I mean, tequila trophy. Yeah, yeah, little bo- gold bottle. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna dive into that, but yeah, there's <laughs> there's some TABC stuff that I'm not gonna talk about. But anyways, uh, yeah, no, man, it was every day was a challenge. Sure, sure. Every day was a challenge. But that's good. I mean, it and flexes yeah. who you are or, yeah. or going to become. Yeah. Well, it takes it takes <laughs> what. I mean, so I've done volume. I've done hotels. I've done fine dining. I've done. A, I mean, I own a trailer. You know. Yeah. You take all those things and you figure out how can I take quality and fine dining mentality and all that sort of stuff and make it volume. Right. Because. I mean, obviously, I understand volume, but I also understand fine dining. Yeah. So it's 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 an interesting. I'm, it, I mean, it's been an interesting education, and I'm I can't be upset at you know I didn't work at Charlie Trotters and move through that lineage. You know what I mean? Sure. So uh, it's 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 been pretty cool. It's been pretty cool. It, I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to put out the quality that I do at Phoebe's right now if I didn't have the education that I had and the background that I had. Right, right. You know, so. And education um, beyond just La Cordon Bleu is actual experience, you know, that you're at Oasis and everything. I'm curious to know what, and maybe not every place you've been at, but when did you make a transition to become, like, chef, owner, or partner? And And what is that transition like? Intimidating, I'm sure. Yeah, it's pretty terrifying. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I went from like I went from the Oasis to the Hyatt. I was the executive chef for Best Bistro and Waltons. Okay. For almost five years, um, I was the executive chef at South Congress Cafe for a short period of time. Uh, All very reputable places. I mean, I I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was at Walton's this morning. <laughs> no, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, it's, yeah. That that place is great. I think they're still pushing out some of my food, so that's kind of cool. Well, that is cool, definitely. Yeah, it's been it's been years, and they're still doing it. So Are that, you getting a little interference? Yeah, it's kind of some reverb. Reverb. Here. And that's why I keep moving the cord. Slide this. You know? Slide your phone over here. Okay. All right. Because I think I don't know. Because I'm hearing it too. Right. Yeah, so, it's just it's every, that's why I keep moving the cord because I move my leg and then yeah. you're hearing like a little zzz, yeah zzz, zzz, zzz. okay yeah. I think it may be trying to pick up signals but there we go okay all right um but yeah so I went from there to there and moved around and you know after South Congress is when I really I was I mean I was making good money. Yeah, moving around and stuff like that. But I was really just I was after something more. So there came a point where money's good, but you also the money's good enough where you're comfortable enough to say maybe I'm after something different. Because when the money's not good, it, yeah, it's, it's hard I mean, to make. not I mean not necessarily because I've left jobs making good money, yeah, and taking ginormous pay cuts, which my wife doesn't really love. Yeah, yeah, but it's more of a. Uh, what is it? Just why? To learn? It's if I don't, I don't know. One of my old business partners, 
he told me, he asked me to do something, right? And he said, do you believe in it? And, you know, I kind of hesitated. And he said, I know that if you don't believe in it, you won't do it. And I was like, you're right. You're right. If I don't, I mean, otherwise, dude, man, I'll put 100 million hours into anything that I put into. Right. Like my life, my body, yeah. my arms, my legs, my whatever. Like it's devoted to you what I'm all in. It's all in, man. Okay. And it doesn't matter how much money you pay me. And that's, uh, I don't think you'd be, you know, with a, you know, trailer across the street if, uh, if that weren't the case. You know? Yeah. You know, it's not, I mean, we it doesn't come easy. Yeah. It doesn't come easy. It's, it's, that's a lot of work. Yeah. That's a, that little box on wheels. is a lot of work, man. <laughs> you know, and we're, you know, we're looking at opening another location for the restaurant. Oh yeah. So I have another location for the restaurant. I any, have the restaurant. Uh, any, let us in. Where? Any ideas? Not yet. Not yeah, I do. No ideas. I no, we have ideas, but I'm it's not I'm I don't Is it in Austin? It is in Austin. Okay. It is in Austin. Okay. It's 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 further north. Further north. It's further north. All right, all right, that's not. <laughs> uh, it's further north and so we're located off south first and old tour if it's further north than that. So Nice, nice. Um it's a great space. Um, you know, we haven't one hundred percent finalized everything, so Oh, okay. So this is something you're actually actively yeah. this isn't just a thought. Okay. No, no, no. We're we're about to we're about to sign some paperwork. Oh, wow. This, this is a, this is a thing. So this is awesome. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So we're we're stoked about it. Um, you know, we've been looking for almost. Oh man, I don't want to say quite a year, but almost a year. Okay. That we've been looking at some different spaces. So in this one space is just it's and it, how, it speaks to us. And I mean, you and I, I was curious like about the transition to become like an owner and a chef partner. Sure. But I'm also curious doing like you've got the family at home and you're you're looking at doing this whole other project. How I mean, how do you balance this personally? Oh man. Or is it tricky? I mean or or no. do you have a good balance? No, I mean I don't know that any chef really has a good balance. Yeah, right, right. Um <laughs> that's what makes a chef a chef yeah, in my no, book. We're just yeah, we're just I mean, we're. I think most chefs could say that they're a hundred percent devoted to whatever it is that they're doing. Yeah. But it just whatever's catching their attention at the time. Sure. You know, whatever desires that attention at the time. I mean, I have an amazing relationship with my daughter, but I'm always, I'm not always the center of attention. I, like, I'm not always there. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, and that, that was a big thing before we even had kids. Was, you know, it was the, I don't want to, I don't want to not be there. Yeah. So when I developed this concept of Phoebe's, it was, um, I don't, I don't want to work nights. I don't want to work this. I don't want to work this because I wanted to be a dad. Yeah, you know, and you watch the movies and you hear stories, and you know, there's the oh, you're the the burnout chef dad that only gets your daughter like one day a week, sort of thing, sure, or sure. your kid or whatever. So I didn't want to be that guy. So, you know, I developed a concept based based on being a family person and changing the dynamic of my life. So, in that respect, I mean, I don't your daughter's too. Mm-hmm. Has she kind of like latched? I mean, she's got a diner. Right. Oh yeah, dude. She and she walks in that place and she knows exactly where oh, to she go. She owns it. Oh man. <laughs> oh dude. She walks in and she knows like all the the the, the girls that work the bar. Okay. And <laughs> she walks in and she'll run right in, turn right into the kitchen, and come up and just grab my leg That's in the in great. the kitchen. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's dangerous, but however, it's 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 pretty. It's it's. I mean, I love every moment but of it, you, man. You guys have your kitchen in particular. You have the past there, so yeah. And you're, you're, she's probably safe there, right? Oh, I mean, she's fine. Yeah, she's yeah. she's she's <laughs> fine, and all, everybody's wa- everybody's watching her. I mean, oh, I'm sure she's she's a focal point, and you know, some of the people are walking. There's, is 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 that the, the Phoebe? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Are you still gonna say this when she's ten? <laughs> you know, so. Um, um, I'm sure that you have your wheels have turned once or twice thinking about, well, will she take this over? Is it, I mean, yeah, man, you know, even if it's just a fleeting thought, it's like, huh, maybe it's not, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, 
I, don't, I mean, you're around. You're gonna let her do her thing. You're. I want her to do whatever she wants to do. Yeah, to be yeah. honest That's, with you, I, I agree to that. You yeah. know, she's she's amazing. She's oh man, she's super sharp, and everybody says it about their own kids and all that sort of stuff. But I mean, she's I, she's I believe that she's she's super sharp. But I would prefer for her to. Change a different path, you know. I'd, I'd love for her to go down a different road. And you're not the first who said that. I mean, and and you know, she's she's why. Uh, it's, what is it that? What is it that about? Like, is there some kind of like pain for the hours, or is it is there's something that makes you wish well, better for her? It's it's. Um, So it's it's an overall so being a chef and being like I started when I was super young, right? Yeah. So I went through the um you know I was done with culinary school and I was done with college well before all of my friends were. Right, right. So they're all going through I mean, one of my friends is in the DEA. You know what I mean? He went to Quantico. Wow. And but during college they're like, Hey dude, we're going on a ski trip. Hey, dude, we're doing this and doing this. Eventually, they start. They stop asking you to do stuff because all you say is, "I gotta work. I all gotta right. work. I gotta work." I yeah. mean, you're putting in like I told you. I, I mean, when I was 19, I'm putting in 72 hours a week. Okay, so that is that's not easy. So you miss out on a lot of stuff. Yeah. So you know I mean, I, do you feel that way that you missed out? I mean, you took. I a mean, I know career, I did. Yeah, but I, I know I did. Does it bother you ever? I mean, it does. Yeah, yeah. It does sometimes. You regret it, or you've moved on from like feeling like there's any regret there. I mean, I I can't say that I missed out on anything. To be honest with you, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I did. I mean, I missed some life experience, but sure, sure. But when you look at your daughter, that's what you're thinking. You don't want her uh, well, because you know we've yeah. currently we've talked about this a little on here. Is that it seems like the current uh, like situation for chefs or cooks. Um, it's not these grueling, rigorous hours with, um, you know, 70, 80 hours, you know, overtime. It's more leaning towards the eight, nine, nine hour workday with a break and, you know, maybe some benefits in there. And we don't see it everywhere, but you see the progression. It's happening gradually. Yeah. I mean, it depends on who you're working for. It definitely depends on who you're working for, but we do see that. It's getting better. I mean, I know that... Oh, we got ways to go. One of my sous chefs um, from previous um, endeavors, he said that, he's like, you know, he, he looked it up, and he's like, you know, the percentage increase based on what we have as a chef or a sous chef of what we have done over the last 20 years has only increased by, like, 1.5%. Yeah, that's not an easy pill to swallow. So, I mean, so I mean, you're capping out unless you... So, I mean, the decision that we make as chefs, right, you're not going to make any money unless you own something. Right. Like, I'm... Hey, microphone, I'm telling you right now, yeah, whoever's, whoever's, listen, whoever's listening, as a chef, like, you can make decent money and you can take care of people and have benefits working for somebody and if you're working for a big you know hotel or a big conglomerate or something like that you have abilities you really do but otherwise yeah, yeah. golf clubs country clubs i, I mean, mean yeah there's sure. certain places you can get your you can get you can squeeze in a good situation yeah and you can get benefits and stuff like that but otherwise like you're really you cap out you cap out yeah yeah and you're really not going to make the money that you deserve to make working the hours that you work and putting in the time and man that's such a good point right creating what you're creating deserve the the just the the fact uh, that some uh, of these guys uh, do deserve a lot more they do they do we i mean we all do you know there's sacrifice involved uh, holidays i mean yeah you get nothing you get nothing i mean we're the only days we're closed are Holy hell. Easter and Christmas? Christmas Day. You're open on the... Oh, well, Easter's a big one, right? Yeah. So the only day that we actually close the restaurant 
it's Christmas Day. Right. And but, honestly, if I really said that I wanted to open on Christmas Day, my partners would be like, yeah, cool, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, come it's on. Like like, very, we're, we're very on. calloused industry where they're like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I like money. You right. like money? Yeah. yeah, we all like money. But, you know, Thanksgiving Day, we're open, and it's a big day for us. And okay. New, Year, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, all those days, and yeah. we're open. I mean, we close at 3. So, fortunately, we don't have that late night thing where, you know, when you're a young sous chef and year-end paperwork comes in and it's New Year's Eve and it's like, time to count inventory. Right, It's right. midnight. We close the restaurant. Let's start counting and maybe we can go make it somewhere and have a drink before the bar is closed. Yeah, no, 3 o'clock is beautiful. Yeah, so. What, um, now back to you transition from, you know, a sous chef, Oasis, sure. or whatever else led you there. What is it like to transition into becoming the, the owner or a partner? Um, like, when was the first time you did this? So I did that whenever I was... So I left when, after I left South Congress Cafe. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and when I was looking for a different job. So the opportunity came on, which was my last partner, and we he wanted to reopen a restaurant. And it was through Craigslist, to be honest with you. Oh, wow. And I, they gave me an offer, and it was, I mean, nothing. It was a nothing offer. Like, I had made that much money when I was 18. Right. And sort of thing. And was just kind of like, okay. And they said, well, you know, this is the future. This is the growth. This is what we're doing. Um, these are the partners. And then as we move forward, uh, it eventually turned into... Um, we'll give you a percentage of the restaurant. And that was really enticing to me. Sure. Because that meant that I was working my ass off for a purpose, you know? Yes. And I, you know, I, I, it, it's a bigger reward, you know what I mean? Instead Absolutely. Of, in, instead of just like... Well, you got your hand in the pot, Yeah, right? and then otherwise, you're just, why, why not just go work at McDonald's, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... You would never do that, but... Yeah, right. you know. But, um, and I had uh, a lot of abilities, and we made some pretty cool opportunities at the restaurant. And then it just didn't work out. It, it, from it a, didn't work out, but did that open up your eyes to say, this is kind of what I should do? This is That was the goal, okay. right? So, so that, that opened the door to that situation. Yeah, so that opened that goal... And then, so he, uh, that partner, he offered me, you know, he wanted me to consult for his no another concept that he had. And then he wanted to, me to consult for another concept that he had. And he said, hey, how about we partner in a, into a restaurant? Right. And that's where, like, Fork and Vine came into play. Oh, okay. So I became a partner in Fork and Vine, and we opened that restaurant, and that was just, I mean, it was bigger than life, man. That thing, it was a big space. It was uh, something that no one was doing in the city. It was just, it was a big wine bar. Okay. Really, I mean, it was almost 7,000 square feet, and we were turning it into, like, basically Chewy's wine bar, the sort of thing. You know, it's just a big restaurant, and we were putting out some good, just simple food, and it wasn't overly expensive. Sure. Um, but it was just in a, it was in a niche location. Um, For people who don't know. Where? Uh, I was on Anderson Lane in Shoal Creek. It's okay. where it's where Jack Allen's is currently right now. Okay. So. And I mean, Jack Allen's anywhere. Will yeah, kill Jack. It. Jack's. Jack's. Yeah, Jack's awesome. Yeah, that's you know, a different. Chris, beast. Chris, Chris, Jack, and their whole team is just. They're, Chris is great, right? Chris is a badass. You close with Chris? Yeah. Okay. All right. I need to get in touch with him. So. Yeah. I mean, if you want, he should be on the show. Chris. Is, oh yeah. Chris, Do you know what he should? He should definitely be on here. I didn't even. That's not even why I was thinking that. But now that you've said that, yes. Yeah, Chris. Chris is a badass. I can't track him down because he's this location, that location. Well, this they're location. about to open another location in Salt Traders. Oh, often. another Salt Traders. Yeah. Oh, good. Bravo. Yeah. Bravo. So Jack he's Allen. just. He's, you know, he's pretty proud of that. But I mean, that guy's. A, he's a badass. Like. I agree. I mean, when I was when I was between jobs, I called him and I was like. He's like, yeah, man, I'll give you a job. Cool. Uh, where did you work for him? At Jack's? I didn't work for him. 
Oh, okay. I didn't work but for him. But he said that. Yeah, he's just like, man, you want a job? I'll give you a job. I love that. Uh, I think, I mean, not discri- not taken away from Chris, but I think that Austin's got that kind of, uh, you know, I mean, patch I, your back kind of feel. Yeah, so I took in uh, one of my my chef buddies who he lost his, his thing. Yeah. And um, he was just like, man, I need to make some money. And I was like, come cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it's cool. Definitely, definitely. We're just a very respectable industry, and I mean, for the most part, where we just take care of each other, you know what I mean? No, I agree. Um, so what happened after, so Fork and Vine, and then you go, I mean, you've got this taste for this, um, you know, ownership, basically. Sure. Um, but so, you see that this is a wise way to go. You yeah. have to have the skills for it. but Yeah, I mean, you learn, like, it, it's, it. That project opened my eyes to a lot of things. Sure. And that was my first build. That was my first major, major dealing with being a partner and being on the lease. And, like, that wall doesn't need to be there. Yeah. Or this could be better. How could we make it better? We'll just knock all those walls down. <laughs> yeah, that's And cool, it's just right? like, <laughs> okay, well, I'm I'm typically used to dealing with the space and then conforming to the space. Sure, sure. And making it the best I can th- through that one space. So, um, you know, I almost moved after that closed. Um, I almost moved to Seattle. And uh, that was per my wife. She was going up there to visit one of her friends, and she's like, why don't you come up there? And I wasn't going. I wasn't going. And then she's like, well... Why don't you come up and see if you can find a job? So I went up there and stodged at a couple places in Seattle. What'd you think of that? It's a neat town. Yeah. It's it's very similar to Austin. Um, it's a bigger town. Um, I'm glad you didn't end up there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it, it's 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 expensive. It's, well, it's, it's expensive here, isn't it? Yeah, but it's 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 more expensive Ooh. there. Ugh. It's more I mean, expensive yeah. there. So, um, you know, I cooked at some spots and I looked at some, you know, I, I didn't get offered jobs there because I didn't, that wasn't my goal. My goal was education. Sure, and just, try it out, feel yeah, out the culture. Yeah, feel out the culture, try it out, education, and uh, really just get a taste for society. I so mean, just. What was the ultimate decision not to go? Um, mostly because I. Couldn't, um, so the pay rate's the same. Yeah. So if you make $50,000 here, you make $50,000 there. But everything's more expensive. But your house is $200,000 here, the house is up there at $400,000. Right, right. So it doesn't get you anywhere, you know? So I was just like, I don't want to struggle. Like, that's not going to help my internal cause of taking care of my family. So... That was the major part of it um, at that point in time. That was the the biggest part. Sure. You know, they were, they were, they were selling. I remember distinctly seeing a um, a newspaper in the newspaper box thing. And it was, this is what $420,000 gets you in Seattle right now. Oh, yeah. And it was a condemned house. And it was a teardown. Yeah. And That's- I was just like, oh, my God, we're going to have to live like... I mean, which wasn't a big deal. We could live on the outskirts of the city, I guess, but sure. and it, which is fine. But I still am just like I don't for anything. To, I don't know the city. Right. That was the biggest thing. Like I didn't know the city, and well, I mean, it's pretty discouraging to see the the newspaper that says yeah. that. I mean, it doesn't say like, yeah, well, this could work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I live, you know, a mile from. Here, so yeah, yeah. Well, well, we're on the outskirts of town. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically, right? Because we got Manchac right there. Yeah. So I mean, we're not. Yeah. So that was that was one of the reasons why. I mean, that was the main reason why we didn't we didn't move. It was just, you know, I when I was much much younger, when I left one of my jobs and I went to Chicago, I got offered three jobs in Chicago. Mm. You know, I'm a Chicago native. No, I know. Yeah. I actually actually do know that. Okay. Um, where uh, curious where, 
Any, um, do you remember? Yeah, so I got offered one job at De La Costa, okay, which was Douglas Rodriguez's restaurant at nice. the time, which is not open at, anymore, and he has less and less restaurants, so I'm not really sure. I got offered a job there. Yeah. Um, I got offered a job at Z four five one. Wow. Yeah. Um, and there was another place that I don't remember. It was Chipple Chipple. It was like Chipolina or something like sure. that. It, no, it was. Uh, oh, man, I can't remember the name of the place. But it was a small place. It was north of the city. Sure. Uh, and, an and, Italian and, and, place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, something like that, and, and yeah, I can't remember the name of what it was called, but yeah, I got offered a couple jobs, and I was like, all right, well, I was basically like, I'm gonna take that job. Well, my wife had like six or eight months worth of contracts on her job, so we wouldn't have seen each other. You know, we would have yeah. been paying for we had our house, and. So we would have been paying for her our house for her to live in, and then we would have been paying some sort of rent or right, right. something for me to live in. So I just didn't I didn't see the value in it, and I was just like, you know, I don't feel like getting divorced right now and all yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff. So I just I did I didn't I decided to not do it. So oh, that's smart. I mean, and it yeah. sounds like talking to you that you kind of see the value in family. Yeah. I mean, when when you talk about how you, you may hope your daughter kind of chooses a different path, I think that's just a fatherly instinct yeah. that you you know want her to have a good life, mm -hmm. uh, which she could very well have as a chef. That's why I was saying maybe hey, if oh, she yeah. does go, maybe she'll work you know eight hour days. And <laughs> everything she could. Will be peachy. She could, and maybe I can set her up for something that she's capable of doing. That uh, you know absolutely. what I mean? Uh, no, yeah, but I, it, like I said though, it's in your 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 folks. Yeah, I just think you have the. That kind of ingrained in you, family, mm -hmm. you know, the importance yeah. of that. Keeping yeah. the wife around, not getting divorced, you know, that's a, <laughs> that's a, <laughs> that's a clear indicator. <laughs> I mean, that's typically your goal when you get married, but, yeah, yeah. you know. Some people don't get the, the memo. Yeah, well, whatever. It happens. <laughs> it doesn't happen. It happens. I mean, my parents were married for 30, 30, 31 years, so. This is past tense. Yeah. Were. Yeah. They got divorced in 31 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. After we all after we left the house. It's like they, they did some traveling and they did some stuff and they just decided that they finally just were like Gosh, that's that was it, because you know? of the thirty one year, it's like almost honorable to say, Yeah, you guys yeah. put it in, you wanted to do something different. Yeah. Is yeah. that how you feel or you took it hard? No, I didn't at all. I didn't. I didn't take it hard at all. I you mean, you were a grown, an adult. At the yeah, time. for sure. And it was just kind of like, I mean, do what makes you happy. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, I'm sure they still are close because when you're old enough, you're mature enough to. Yeah, I mean, we have uh, you know my my daughter and then my sister's kids and stuff like that, and they they uh, they're very they're very much around. Sure, sure. That's excellent. So it's 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 a cool thing. It's a cool thing. So we, we, we were going to talk about Mighty Bird real quick. Okay. What what So Mighty Bird was how many locations? One? A Mighty, trailer. Mighty Bird had two and a trailer. Two locations and a trailer. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what, uh, that was the same kind of situation. You went in with a chef owner, as a chef owner. So Mighty Bird was um, the, same own, the same partner that I had with Fork and Vine. Oh, okay. You guys tried something new. Okay, no, he, so he, I was working in, within the concept that we were, like, restyling. Yeah. Right? So, and then he said, okay, I really like this guy. Wow. Oh, it's that one. Something's crapping out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that one's, like, blinking red. Going Anybody crazy. listening to the audio here, we're attempting to record this via video. Yeah, but and they're not. Like they're not. They're 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 tired of us. I they guess. are tired. But um, that's okay. Yeah, it's fine. So um, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Um, so he hired me. He liked me, and he liked my food. So they paid me him and his partner for that concept. They paid me to develop their menu for their opening. Sure. Opening and stuff like that. So then they they we, we went through all of the, that rigmarole. Opening the restaurant, I mean, holy crap, we did ACL, and then we opened... With the trailer? No, with 
Mighty Bird, and we did, they didn't even have the trailer then. Oh wow! Okay. So I was still consulting at that point in time. So they uh, opened the restaurant, and they didn't open the restaurant. They we did ACL, and then they opened the second location of Mighty Bird, like the second weekend of ACL. So it was just it was we were doing the prep out of the restaurant that I was partnering with, like at that point in time with the other partner. So we were doing all the prep out of that kitchen, and then we were slowly closing down that uh, kitchen because of uh, real estate sales and sure. leases and all that, how that goes. But um, we were slowly closing down that, so we had that was basically one of our last times to be in that kitchen. But we were doing all the prep weeks before and then uh they opened the restaurant like the second week and that was the first i think that was the first year they did this two weekends of acl wow and it was wild dude it was (laughs) it was it was was fucking wild man you know and then it was uh that was the first year that year that it got flooded out the only year that it's ever been canceled yeah and uh yeah, no, I remember a lot riding. Of disappointed I, I, people. I, I, yeah, dude, I rode my bike back from ACL to the restaurant to make more product, and then I didn't get home till I don't know six six thirty in the morning, and then load in is at like seven, and so it was just oh, this geez. wild. And they're calling me, and they're like, just do, finish this and do this and this and this. And then they closed the next day. Oh, God. So all that production that I did that day, yeah. it was just, like, trash, essentially. Yeah, uh, trash, and my goodness, like, you're exhausted. Oh, yeah, dude. And then, uh, the pro- like, the oh, that's a lot to carry, man. Yeah. It, it was a wild ride. It was a wild ride. So, I mean, so anyways, so Mighty Bird... Um, it had a, a director of operations, and it had, like, I did all the, the recipes for all of that stuff. And, you know, then we opened Fork and Vine shortly thereafter. And oh, uh, so it, I had that flip-flop. The Mighty Bird was first. Mighty Bird was first. Okay. And I was very surprised to see Mighty Bird not stick around. Yeah. Uh, no. Still. Yeah. Still kind of surprised. I mean, we have pluckers, and, you know, I mean, like, there's 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 a niche for it. Uh, for sure. I guess it's tricky, right? It's a tricky market. It is a tricky market, you know, when you're only doing chicken. Yeah, it's, it's it's you have to have a certain kind of appeal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and we did, and um, you that's know, that's why I say I'm surprised to this day. Yeah, it it, it, it was. It's a tough market, man. It was. It, we did. We you know we tried to get the appeal, um, but it. I think anything's tough. Even if you get the appeal, doesn't it doesn't even mean it, it takes you know. So you go you go to and we we ended up at the end. We tried some different stuff, but I mean, when you, how often do you go out to eat and everybody's like, "I want chicken." Right, right. So you like when I took over as director of operations for that company, um, it was. Let's try some different things for sure, right? So let's we we put in pork. You know, we were doing. I put some pigs on the rotisserie. I put. I mean, we did some different stuff, and we. But I think at that point in time, it was. You mean pork. it was kind of beyond? It was beyond. It was beyond the original intent. And yeah, all that even when of, you say because with yeah. the, it's it's all chicken, mighty bird, and then you say, hey, you know, maybe people aren't after this. Let's throw the pork on here. Right. Maybe you're you're pulling there for yeah. You're reaching out of yeah. out of reach. I mean, but it, I it, it, I will say this: whenever whatever you do, even if I, you're completely off my radar, you always pop back up, and you're always doing something. Yeah, and I got I admire that, and I, I, I mean Phoebe's Phoebe's Diner. I mean, you got a good reason to keep that going for us. I oh, mean, dude. yeah. And you also have a lot of people who love it. <laughs> yeah. So you've got that going for you. I mean, I've been in there. I've eaten. I don't know if you were even there when I was eating there. You were there once. Yeah, I was there once. Okay. Yeah. I you mean, were I, I think you were I was, there. You were in there with your daughter. Yeah, and then I was at Wine Belly, and I just I'll, I'll go in and order something. And yeah. you guys have fried pickles, right? 
We don't do fried pickles. We do ever. We have never done fried pickles. Oh shit. We do fried green tomatoes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Whoops. I mm. put I put that out there somewhere that you guys did that. I didn't. No. We haven't done those there. I mean, I used to do fried pickles. I must have got the fried green tomatoes then, because yeah. I had remembered something like that. Yeah, you fried green tomatoes, and then we do like the hatch chili pimento cheese with it, and then the hot oh, sauce. God damn. Yeah, no, it's it's good stuff. I mean, yeah, dude, man, it's. Uh, we do some cool twists on some fun, just basic stuff, dude. You know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just not. Uh, I'm not trying to blow anybody's mind. I mean, I am. Everybody, everybody's <laughs> trying to blow everybody's mind, right? Right. But um, yeah, dude, it's it's just we just. Yeah, I mean, it's good food. You know, I ran into one of my buddies at uh, the food or the the. Uh, Hot Luck The wine festival Oh, food and wine The food and wine, dude Yeah And Yeah, I didn't go to Hot Luck no, I didn't go okay. to Hot Luck this year um, I went to Food and Wine this year And like This is one of the first years I haven't been cooking Yeah, yeah To do it And, and how'd you like that? It was weird, man <laughs> It was honestly weird And one of my buddies Got me in and um, That's excellent Yeah, right. no It was super rad Because it's such a popular event But it just you know, it's it's this cool, yeah, dude. It, it, it was rad. It yeah. was it was really rad just to like lay back and just appreciate not doing it, but appreciate what the the chefs there are doing. Sure, sure. Because I don't think a lot of people respect and understand, but that's that's a lot of work, man. Yes, yes. It's a lot of work, and the amount of time and effort and energy and you know, doing that stuff of an, out of a cooler. Yeah, I mean, it's oh, yeah. just, it's 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 pretty epic. It's very epic, and and definitely aiming to impress when you're there. Typically, yeah. Typically, oh, yeah. Ho- I mean, hopefully, <laughs> if you're if you're that chef. But I mean, yeah, I mean, you're there to just please everybody and do your thing and make sure all those people that are just having a really good time and drinking some delicious wines and definitely learning and stuff like that that you're just you're just you're doing the best you can so but it's yeah no man it's 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 a lot of effort so so food and wine you you attended in as a you know citizen you're enjoying it yeah i did yeah that was weird sure so what do you do as a citizen when you just go out into the where do you go eat i mean cuz you're also embedded in this culture where, sure. I mean, you may be biased and you may want to go to a friend's place, but like when you go out with your woman or with your daughter and your, your the family or just yourself, I always sure. ask this. This is I, I, okay. I know you've been busy and you haven't had a chance to catch up on these, but this is the one question that I ask. Yeah. Where Where are your hidden gems? They, my, don't, need, they my, don't need to be hidden, but they're not even hidden. It's good. just it's it's. My wife and I love margaritas. Okay. Love margaritas, right? Um, my daughter will inhale guacamole. Oh, where where is this going? Where where is it? I mean, it doesn't. I mean, she used to when she was way little, little. She would just. I mean, we had her munching on avocados. Yeah, yeah. And then now, like, she will take an avocado and spit it out. Because it's not guacamole, because it doesn't have the the. the she the, loves she loves acidic things. She loves pickles. She yeah, loves yeah. all that sort of stuff. That's awesome. Um, yeah, no, she's. I mean, my mother in law. She she's like she has quite the palate. I don't know why. And I'm like, <laughs> well, Daddy seasons food when he cooks, so I don't know what to tell you. Um, <laughs> you know, man, we we don't. <laughs> so margaritas guac. Where are the, you guys going for that? The biggest thing. Um, so, um, we go to, um, Casa Garcia's, okay. which is right down the road. Okay. And then we go to, um, Alma. Yeah. Those El, are both El, 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 El Alma. Yep. Yep. I thought because of the margaritas, right? Yeah. El Alma, my wife's favorite margaritas, hands down, <laughs> El Alma. There we go. That's a... We can. Uh, we're gonna start. We're gonna put that out there because that's that's not the first time that's been said. Yeah. No. She. Uh, yeah. That's. And that's, there's a happy hour, right? I mean, I don't know. It okay. doesn't. It doesn't really. It doesn't. Really, it, 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 doesn't it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. Okay. It's just more like, <laughs> hey, let's go get a margarita. Sure. Where are you wanting 
to go. You're off. I'm off. What do you want to do? We don't have a kid. Right, right. But we can also bring the kid, you know, and, and, she, yeah. and she's just like, we just give her a big old bowl of guacamole. Yeah, and, and El Alma's right, Barton Springs. Barton right? Springs and Lamar. Somewhere. Right, yeah, right, right there. after the bridge there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There goes our second one. Our second one's Casualty. done. It's all right. Fingers crossed that we get some visuals on this yeah, podcast. That's all right. That's yeah. okay. Uh, but El, okay, El Alma. El any, Alma. Any others you'd care to share? Um, man, other like I mean, there's Cafe Malta, which is right down the road, where we go and get a glass of wine or something like that. But we don't. <laughs> I mean, we don't get out much, man. You sure. know what I mean? You, yeah. we, we don't. We're not the. Any I mean now that like, we have a two year old, we that don't changes a lot. They yeah. When you have a kid, you don't. You're not like the next restaurant opens. Like there's. That whole competitive vibe, uh, competitive vibe, and then that like new challenge and stuff like that, it just changes a little bit, and it's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to wear a chef coat every day. I'm not trying to do whatever. I'm just trying to, honestly, like what Phoebe's Diner is, is, uh, it's just simple good food that you can take your daughter to and eat, and you yeah. guys can afford to eat there every day, and it's just. You know, I'm not trying to be a commercial, but that that was the idea, you know? Yeah. My partners have, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven kids between us. Oh, yeah. And so we want a place, and they own restaurants, and we want a place that they can bring their kids to every day and not worry about it and all Absolutely. that sort of stuff. So. That was the biggest thing, and that was the biggest thing for me. Have I mean, not even having my first child. Yet. Right. It was just so like I was going to say, when you have, when you don't have kids, you kind of understand that that you don't want kids around. But yeah. then, when you have kids, I mean, it's so silly not to want kids around. Well, I mean, that's that's a huge demographic, dude. Yeah. And that's a lot of. I mean, I'm not trying to say it's it's a lot of money, but I mean, it is. You yeah. know, it's it, we can we can still cook amazing. I mean, dude, I can take some of the food that I have on the menu right now, and I can make it look like I used to cook on a fine dining menu. All right, right. And you wouldn't know the difference. I believe it. I believe it. I mean, you've got some killer food on your menu anyway. <laughs> yeah. So it's just it's it's not. You know, it's it's. It, we just take our gift, like our education and our gifts and our abilities and. We take those things and we make it to where it, it, we can turn it into whatever we want to turn it into. You know what I mean? Sure. So, and that's that's really the goal with Phoebe, and that's the goal with Liberation. I mean, Liberation is just this whole different entity. It's a different en- entity. Man, we we spent a lot of time on Phoebe's, but Liberation, real quick. What are what what's the cuisine of choice here? So Liberation started out as Liberation Fish. It was the it right. was all Gulf cuisine. It was you know we have a crawfish queso. Okay. We had an oyster po' boy. We had the fish and chips that was made out. Of, I mean, we sugar cure redfish. Um, we we did all that stuff, and we had to you know m- manipulate it and move it around the city a little bit to to get into a niche. Well, now it's turned into um, it's Gulf Coast, but it meets like Hill Country Smokehouse, okay, sort of thing. So, so smoker. So we have, yeah, I have. A, we built a big, you know, um, I think it's a hundred and twenty gallon smoker. And and for anyone listening. Liberation Kitchen is at the Moon Tower right uh, now. Yeah. Off it's a, Manchac, it, it, Slaughter Manchac area. Yeah, it's open right now. I mean, yeah, yeah she's, she's, yeah, Bethany's over there cooking up some amazing stuff. So, I mean, she's smoking, um, you know, we're, we're doing some smoked baby back ribs with, uh, I mean, she's beautiful. Yeah. 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 So we have a, she's Korean. So we have a Korean style barbecue sauce that we're doing that. We have an Alabama style barbecue sauce. We have a Texas style, which is like the hotter barbecue sauce, and um, you know. And then we do. We still do the sugar cured red fish, fish and chips. So you still have the golf. So influence. we're bringing, yeah, we're bringing that kind of back and forth, and um, we're doing. Um, you know, we do churros. We do. Yeah, it's one. It's wanting to go, man. It's done. I think. 
done. It's done. Okay. Bye. See like, ya. Oh, bye. It was a valiant effort. Yeah, and yeah. everybody's gone, I think. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so that doesn't work. Okay, let's get <laughs> wild now. Let's get wild. No one can see us. Um, I'm trying to think of what else that we do. I mean, she does some different specials and stuff like that. Um, but it's... Uh, it's kind of Texas Smokehouse, like Hill Country Smokehouse nice. meets like Texas Gulf. And was that like um, I don't I don't know if the word is marketing, but like to like you want to appeal to people. I mean, at Moon Tower especially. I don't know when I think the Moon Tower, the outdoor bar. Sure. I don't know the barbecue and sounds well, very I mean, fitting. It's it is. It's it's just it's it's a very fitting cuisine for. The area, you know, I actually have, um, so I cured two, two pork bellies and I'm dry rubbing them and they're drying right now in my walk-in and I'm going to smoke them and then I'm going to take that and then I'm going to make a, uh, an oyster po' boy with those. So it's, you know, it's kind of taking what... Is that at Liberation or Phoebe's? It's going to be at Liberation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it'll be, it'll be next week. Next, next week. Next week. Okay. Next week the bill, the bellies will you be You know, done. Chef Dan, if I tell him that, I uh, told you Dan from Lost Pines. Yeah. He'll be there. Yeah. Without question. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> well, tell him to contact me. I, oh, I will. I mean, I'm going to tell him about this actual pool boy first, and then I'll tell him to contact you. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, you know, it's not, I mean... Yeah, sure. We're trying to. We're a restaurant. We're trying to appeal to the masses. We're yeah, trying to. Yeah. We're trying to make money and serve good food and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's 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 I, it's it's desirable. You know what yep. I mean? Yep, it's yep. it's something that's not super prominent in the city, and it's uh, you know we're putting um, we're about to do a you know a, a variation on smoked fish. Nice and. Um, it's bringing it. It's not. We're not trying to. I'm not trying to compete with Aaron Franklin. I'm not trying to compete with I, La Barbecue. I'm not trying to compete. That's no, no. That's but, not the thing. You know. No, it's, but you didn't hit the nail on the head because you are on the same strip as Valentinas. <laughs> right. So so, <laughs> so okay. I'm not trying to compete with Valentinas. But I was saying you got stiff competition, but it's perfect. Because the so, moon tower is operating in different Okay, so, so the difference between them and us, <coughs> and, uh, I mean, they do amazing stuff. Like, Miguel's amazing. Like, what they do and what they've produced, their concept, their food is awesome. Sure, sure. You know, and um, Valentina, we, I mean, my wife and I eat there, you know. 4, we, we, 4 p.m. We, is the time with no line. Just go. We used I don't to, we, we used to live right people. across the street from their trailer. So. Oh, okay. So you, you've gotten that yeah. plenty. Yeah. Yeah. So and I, I used to, I mean, I used to run two restaurants downtown when he first started. I mean, I, he was at Ranch 616. I mean, nice. I've known him for a long time. Sure. And um, they have hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Like, absolutely dire. Like, holy crap. Tex-Mex and smoke. Right, right. I mean, holy crap. Like... <laughs> Welcome to Austin, Texas. Right. Like, n- no one commits to that, and they do, and it's awesome. So, I mean, my thing is, you know, when I first started Liberation Fish, it was the it was the seafood, and I really wanted to focus on that. Well, we didn't make enough money doing that. Yeah. So we evolved and all that sort of stuff. So now I'm being able to evolve um, smoke. And Gulf Seafood. I like that, yeah. So it's something that's a little different, and, and it, maybe it's a little challenging to Valentina's. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I don't know. I mean, they're, oh, do, they're no. doing their own thing. You but know, I just, I'm just giving you all I know, time. but I'm just, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to bring them up and all that stuff, because they do a great job. They're doing Oh, it. yeah, they absolutely do. Yeah. But they're also, I mean, it's a very good balance if you mm-hmm. like barbecue, because they're open to a certain time, and then you guys are at the Moon Tower. Yeah. And anybody who's out getting a drink, you'll be yeah. there. You're not, yeah. So. Well, man, uh, our, our our fish and chips. I would challenge most anybody. Ah, in this the, is great. In this the, is great. I would challenge most anybody in the city 
to our fish and chips. Okay, okay. That's daily. It's not uh, on a. Certain it's every day. day. Okay, it's every day, man. It's it's epically good. Okay, I told you that we're doing the podcast. We're so close that I need to bring people over. A lot of people yeah. have just needed to shoot out of here. Yeah. But that's that's a thing, you know. I'm yeah. I'm going to keep that going, especially with the fish well, and chips. Take them over there, and I mean, we can. Uh, I'll give you a, like this. A card that says like you get punches oh, okay, every sure. every time you bring people. I mean, I'm whatever you want, but um, <laughs> I'm trying that fish and chips though for sure. It's uh, it's kind of funny. Like the owner of Moon Tower is just like, how's everything going? And you know they had they've had stubs over yeah. there. Okay, and, and like a, a food truck or something. Yeah, a food okay. trailer and stuff. And they then they left, but I was just like, hey, you know, how's everything going? Blah blah blah. And he's like, I heard your fish and chips is amazing. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I'm excited about that. But at the same time, I'm like, we spent a lot of money on this smoker. And I put, I, bu- I built a lot of it. I built a you lot of it. You throw that fish in the smoker for a couple minutes before you batter it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean. I don't know. Use, I, don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, we're, we're looking at different stuff to. I, this smoker will catch on. I mean, if that's what I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about it, but. Yeah. It's it is what it is, and it's, I think it's beautiful, man. Smelling the smoke at the moon. Oh, dude. come on! Yeah, that's great. Well, it's outside, it's backyard, outside backyard barbecue and oh, all that yeah, sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, dude, it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool what we're doing over there, and so you're gonna keep that going. And I know future plans. We've already discussed Phoebe's Phoebe's Diner 2.0. Yeah, little, soon. A little further north. S- soon. Yeah, no, we'll, I'll, I could probably commit to that in probably a week or two. Okay. Excellent. And say that we're doing that. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's some future growth. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about the whole situation. Dude, I am too. And I know there's, there's plenty of things. We were, uh, I mean, we need to get you back in uh, on here. But uh, we were talking about this time off for tuna, and you were talking about the... Share the golf. Yeah. Share the golf. Um, none of that was on, on online here. Yeah. But maybe I can, like, cut you off and we'll, that'll require you to get back over here. But it's not like you're far. <laughs> I'm right down the street, dude. Any, any, yeah, you want to hang out and drink some beer and talk about stuff? I'm, 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 I'm available. I, I will announce this at the very end of our hour and 30 minute podcast is that these podcasts from this point forward, and then this one may be some somewhat visual, but they will be available in visual format. We're on well, YouTube awesome. or whatever. Um, this will be the last episode in season one, which cool. is all strictly audio. That's awesome. So there you go. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. My, my, I'm empty here. Yeah, we can fix that. We can fix that. But um, Chef Cannon, thank you. Thank you for coming. You need to come back. I hope you do. And I will. Um, well, well, I'm fish and chips. That's on my to-do list here. I mean, it's right across the street, dude. It is right across the street. Are you going over there? I can't believe you haven't been there. Yet. Oh, I've I've been there. Yeah, I've been yeah, over yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but I, I, yeah, I wanted to like, I don't know. In my head, I was like, we're done with the podcast. Let's go to Liberation. And you know, most people got to. If you want, if you want to. Yeah. Well, we can. I mean, I don't. Mind. We definitely can. But like, I've mind. had I don't know, thirty guests almost. <laughs> Hey man, my wife and my daughter are not in town right now, so I'm, that's that's uh, okay. Sorry, I was. We can we can the cats out of the bag. That's a beautiful thing. Sometimes you need a little time to yourself. Yeah, no, I mean I could go home and work on the backyard, or you know we could go over there and eat some food, and then I could go there, back in the backyard. There so. you go. Whatever you want, my man. But thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to get you back over here, especially when Phoebe's 2.0 opens. Uh, yeah, there we I'm go. Down. Let All me right. know. I'll be down for it. All right. Thank you, man. I appreciate it.